Hello, gentle viewers. This is Vindian welcoming you back to Tabletop Simulator and Paths of Glory. We're about to begin turn number eight. And things are definitely looking interesting. Um, Romania entered the war. Greece is kind of in the war, but also kind of not. As is uh, Bulgaria, but not yet. Um, things along the Italian-Austrian border have been fairly passive, but that won't last forever. Um, Germany is poising itself for another attack on France after a couple of German armies were cut off when I failed to read the rules correctly. Um, again, sorry about that, uh, about supply. But Germany saw an excellent chance of punching through and doing some pretty serious damage. Um, over in the Ottoman Empire, uh, we built the Sinai Pipeline, which means there's no longer a penalty if we want to start pushing east with the two core. We also have the MEF, but keys, please keep around. It takes three ops to activate it. So it's honestly probably not going to be doing a whole heck of a lot. Um, we also have this Libyan army, uh, that we're going to need to deal with here eventually. Uh, but for right now, this front remains fairly static. Uh, the big question mark is going to be Romania. Um, loyal to the Allies, they offer a quick way to pick up some free territory, but they also are badly exposed if Bulgaria enters the war. Um... So that's going to be an interesting thing that we need to concern ourselves with. We also have these two additional core here in Salonika that we could eventually use to try to make a drive on Constantinople. However, it's extremely important to recall that you can only ever transfer one core. Is it per action round or per turn? Um, let me quickly check that rule. The Near East rules, by the way, are by far the most irritating additional rules. And yet, I really don't, I really don't think, yeah. The British can strategically redeploy one British or Australian Corps per turn. Um... And then only Russia can use, like, normal movement. Same for the Central Powers. The only power that has free movement in the, the Near East is, well, Turkey. Uh, before we get started uh, with the game itself, um, a bit of a prediction on my part. I really have the feeling this game is not going to end anytime soon. Um... The Central Powers were up to about 17 victory points last turn until I reread the supply rules and realized I'd been basically giving them free real estate in terms of how to deal with <clears throat> their supply situation. Because they can't actually draw supply from ports unless they're Central Powers ports or Russian ports. That's why they're filled in in black. So it actually makes really good sense, and if I'd paid more attention to that, then it would have been better, but whatever. Um, so that is where we are right now. Uh, let's go ahead and roll for our mandated offensives. The allies get a four, so we're expecting Italy to attack, and it's going to be a five, so that actually doesn't matter for Germany. Um... Okay, so the Central Powers now enter into things, and they could instantly bring Bulgaria into the Central Powers. And there's a couple of reasons I'd like to do that. The first and most important reason is they want to get into total war by the end of this turn. They've been kind of held back by having these fairly low quality cards, and they'd really like to do that. So I think we're not gonna we're not gonna sugarcoat this. We're just gonna make it a nice easy decision. First action central powers, neutral entry of Bulgaria. 
<clears throat> war status increases by two. And now they'll be in the total war phase at the end of this turn. Which is going to be very significant because they'll be able to shuffle in their total war cards. They can really do this whenever they want to. Uh, but they're going to just do it now to get it over with. And then we need to come over to Bulgaria. We remove this. And I need to quickly check the manual to figure out where the Bulgarian units enter. Uh, so they get two core in Sofia, and then I can put the remaining core anywhere I like. Not anywhere I'd like. I can't just, like, drop them in London, obviously. Um, where else would I like them to be? And I can only put one core per space. Probably three because if we can punch out Bucharest we can make, knock Romania out of the war very very quickly which is actually what happened historically um, and then eventually Greece is going to enter the war so we're going to go one there and one there hmm no, let's put another core in Burgos. That way I can be a bit more active and, and try to punish them. So there's only technically two more neutral nations left. Greece is still not fully in the war. And then Albania can join the war. But other than that, every other power is in. And even if the Allies had the Greek card, they can't use it. Uh, which they don't, anyway. So, what do we want to do here? Backs to the wall. They can cancel the retreat. Very nice. Um, right. If I'm going to do anything with Serbia, I have to do it this turn using the Putnik card. Because once 19... Oh, no, it is already 1916. So actually, I can't use that card. That's fine. Um, I like the idea of bringing in... The Australian and Canadian cores. Because remember what I said. The Australian core actually can be used in the Near East. Um, as they were historically, of course, the Anzac core was used uh, at Gallipoli. Hmm... But I don't really feel the need to do that right now. So, what are we going to do here? We need to make some noise with Italy this turn. We have to attack if we can. So I think we're going to go ahead and we're going to take some ops this turn. I'm going to go ahead and play Influenza for Ops. I I just don't think it's that great a card. It's great for reinforcements. That part is true, but I'd rather have the Ops right now. Because I want to get prepared for an Italian attack on Austria. So, I'm going to go 1. Remember, it's per space, not per unit. This gives me a couple of different options here, but I pretty much know what I'm going to do. I'm going to try to attack him in Udine, but we'll see what happens here. So that's two actions that we've taken. Um, I can't make a big push on Oster. I can't make a big push on Debrecen. While these guys are targeting me. So I think I'm going to go ahead and pull these three armies across for the third op. And I'm going to add another army to uh, Ujgorid.
No, I'm going to leave it here. So that's three. And then fourth. I'm halfway tempted to just retreat into Riga. And try to focus on defending that rather than... Hmm... I want to do something over here. Yeah, this is like hilariously easy. No, I can't. I can't go to say day and that'll end my turn. But I can easily go one, two, three. Oh no, sorry. Wait. Does swamp stop movement? Now, that's an interesting question I need to ask myself. It says you have to stop your advance. Um, I'm trying to see if terrain forces you to stop. Um, I don't think it does. Yeah, because it deliberately says it must stop on attacks. So you can actually move as far as you want to, as long as it's, you know, your territory. So that's fine. Uh, which is great, actually, because then I can do things like this. I can go one, two, three, four, and these all get removed. Which instantly basically means uh, one, two, three, four. Very easy decision to make, and if the Germans counterattack, I lose a core, no big deal. But yeah, this just says you have to stop an advance into. It doesn't say that you have to stop your movement into it, because otherwise everything just costs one movement to get into or out of. Okay, that is the first turn of the Allies. Let's switch back to the Central Powers. Now... Riga is a really obvious target here. It's a very, very obvious target. But I'd kind of like to make sure that Germany's a little bit stronger before I make that attack. Um, where else could the, could the Central Powers really make some moves? An attack on Romania could be pretty productive, but only if a couple of other things happen first. Um, are there any other really good cards here? I mean, it's a free VP, but this is just a card that has better uses. Again, Zeppelin raids stop the British. I can I can only use I can't use this card as an event. That's the good news. So that's a very powerful ops card. Let's do it. Let's go ahead and play this card, but for what purpose? Strategic redeployment doesn't really help us a whole lot. Um, I'm not going to play it as the event, so I'm going to play it for ops. And then it's just going to be a question of what I do with those ops. Um, oh wait, there's no direct path between Nancy and, uh, Belford. No, yes, there is. Perfect. That is definitely one thing that I could do. I could muster up a pretty massive assault and start pushing through the southern part of France. Um, there's fewer VP there to take, but it's also going to do what I'd really like to see happen, which is pull people away 
from defending this corridor, and then I can start pushing back through with the others. There's also a real good chance I get a flank attack. And I could therefore do some really serious damage. It does open up Nancy to being retaken. Verdun is quite heavily fortified. And there's really very little I can do to stop them. So I'm not really going to mess with that too terribly much. So I think this is the first thing I do. I think I designate these bases both for attack. And we're going to try to wipe out some units there. And then... And then let's, for the other op, let's go ahead and pull up these two core. Because right now, there's very little I can do with Austria. Bulgaria versus Romania is, is going to basically come down to dice rolls, no matter what I do. Um... Turkey is, if they were going to attack, they should have done it earlier. Um, yes, they could just move into the Sinai pipeline, but they're badly outmatched by the British forces. Um, so yeah, there's not really a huge amount that can be done here to really change the situation. In my opinion. Um, so... Let's go ahead and resolve this combat here. So, um, it is going to be 15 on 4. Uh, because of Mulhouse, they're going to go ahead and play Alpencore as a combat card to increase it by a plus 1, because why wouldn't they? Uh, the Allies have their own chance to play a combat card, though. And they do have one actual... Oh, no, they don't. All their cards are offensive. They're not defensive. So that's fine. Um, so then we're going to switch back. Uh, there is no option for the Central Powers. Or for the Allies. Um... And then lastly, we're going to attempt to flank attack. Except, I think... Oh no, Belfort is mountain. So we actually cannot do that. We cannot try a flank attack. It's fine though. It's still going to be a 15v4 fight. So I'm pretty sure we're going to do quite well. Or not. Uh, you know what? Or not. So, a 4, they deal 4 losses. A 3 on the 15 is 5 losses. So, we do win the fight, but we are going to take 4 losses. Um, I'm going to choose to take it with one of the ones in non-C here. Uh, that gets reduced. That gets sent back to the eliminated core. They'll have to retreat 1 space, and they're going to retreat to Dijon. You're going to advance. And that's it, actually. I'm not going to advance in a very big way because I don't need to. Now the Allies have to react to me basically punching through the southern part of the Maginot line. And doing some, some damage to them. Or so Maginot line in World War II... God, I can't even remember. I have to look that up. I'm pretty sure it's World War One, though. And then they reinforced it for World War Two, And the Germans just did it again. Uh, but it actually succeeded that time. Let me see here. No, the national line is World War Two. Whoopsie. So, it's the same general principle, though. It's a line of forts. It's just greatly extended during World War II. But anyway, apologies. I really should have known better than that. Um, it's something I spent a lot of my life studying was World War I. So, you know, shame on me. 
Um, Belfort is not a VP, but we're we're much more threatening now. So how are the Allies going to react? They've got a couple of options here, really. One of the things they definitely want to do is they definitely want to hit Italy. Or Austria. And I really think that's probably the beginning of what they're going to do this turn. But they, also don't have a, they also don't have a very big hand. Uh, most of their cards are twos, not threes or more. Um, I'm not going to be playing over there anytime soon. But remember that this deck won't get shuffled again until we've gone through all the cards. So that's something we need to consider as well. But the last thing I want to do is let Austria reinforce here. So I think this is the turn we make the attack. So we're going to need at least two ops because we're going to want to attack with both spaces and drive them back to uh, drive them back to Trieste. Um, is there any other attacks I'd like to make? There is, actually. Um, do I have a four card? I sure don't. That's a real shame, because what I would love to do... Is pull these units forward. Ah, but then, remember, these don't stop movement. They just stop advances. They could just cut me off pretty easily. Um... I do very much want to reinforce things, though. Oh, and since they win the they won the combat, they get to keep the Alpine Core card. I do have my own Alpine Core Alpine troops um, that'll help me win this particular battle. All right, so let's go ahead and play o USA reinforcements as ops. And we're going to do the Russian one first. And we're just going to go one, two, one, two, one, two. Very simple. Uh, doesn't have to be anything too thrilling. This is about threatening either Debrecen or Budapest. And this is going to force Austria to decide what to do with these units. Because the last thing they can afford to do is lose both of their capitals. Um, and it also gives me the opportunity, if I want to, to flank and try to wipe out Debrecen. So this is a very, very strong move. Very good use of one ops. And then these other two ops are going to be used here. So it's going to be three armies and a core against one army and Udine. Um, I get to decide if I'm going to do a flank attack. I'm not going to. Um, I don't get enough of a plus one for it because they have these friends in Trieste they can draw to. Uh, so I'm going to go ahead and play Alpine Troops as a combat card. Uh, the Central Powers are going to carefully check their hand. I don't think they have anything they can legally play. Um, it's not a mountain space, so it doesn't actually count. Otherwise, that would actually be a very powerful card, but this isn't a mountain space. It's just a generic space. So, no biggie. Um, that's just a quality unit for there. So, Austria has a 3. Italy has a 7. That's a four because of my thing here. So on a seven plus four, that's four losses. On a three, a five gets them three losses. So I do win the battle. Uh, I inflict three losses. The best I can do is this. And they have to retreat one space. So they do. Uh, they inflicted three losses on me, so I'm going to have to do reduce strength, reduce strength. 
And I'm only going to advance one army into Udin. Because I don't want to open this up for them to advance with these three core. Uh, I get to keep my combat card. And most importantly, I have satisfied my mandated offensive for this turn. So, very simple attack. Not anything too crazy, but it got the job done. Um, and now we switch back to the central powers. Um, they very much want to cause havoc right here. Because the Russians have had multiple opportunities to pull back and they haven't yet. If we can beat them to Riga, and if we can inflict enough losses, we can. Uh, we can start sieging this down and taking the other easy one. And frankly, we have all this territory to move through at that point. So this is kind of the key to the rest of Russia and just causing untold havoc. Oh, wait. Do spaces draw supply or do only armies draw supply? Because actually Königsberg might return to German control. I need to refresh my memory for spaces here. In which, if it were... So, here's the rule that I'm reading here. It's 14.3.6. During the attrition phase, any friendly controlled space which does not control an undestroyed friendly fort, in which it would... And which, if it were a friendly company, would be eliminated for being OOS, becomes enemy controlled. So it's not the reverse. So it is not the reverse. Basically, this would count as a friendly controlled space. We'd actually have to put a unit in there to take it back. Um, but that's easily done. So I definitely want to attack this turn using my wireless intercepts. That goes without saying. And look, 1VP is not nearly as valuable as a 4 Ops card. But I'm going to use the Zeppelin Raids card instead for Ops. Because, like, cutting off British reinforcements is just not that valuable at this point in the game. Not when the British are already kind of there in force and haven't really done very much. So we're going to get some Ops going on. Uh, you know what? Let's go and just retake Königsberg. It's an easy choice. I can just go one, two, three, four. And I'm literally just doing that to remove the spaces and regain a VP. That was one. This is going to be two. However, no, I can't do a flank attack legally because I don't have an additional space. Annoying. But I still think we'd win this battle pretty handily, so I think I'll still do that. Um, attacking into Dijon has a lot of merit, too. Plus, I can use my Alpencore card again. So we're going to go three. And then what do I do for the fourth? I think I have to commit these Viennese reserves. Uh, three armies in Vienna won't do me any good if I lose Budapest. Now. So I'm going to move one army to Budapest for sure. What do these other two armies in Vienna? I kind of have to leave at least one of them here. 
Because if the Russians break through, and they very well might, Vienna is going to be their next target. Now, I can also look at this map and decide that maybe Debrecen is going to be their their target. Very, very true. The Russians have a lot of flexibility about how to take take care of Austria for right now. And because of that, I have to decide how to use these last two armies in Vienna. I think one has to stay there. I don't think I have another option to that. So the other question is, I could move one down to Trieste to help resist an Italian advance if one comes, or to counterattack here, or to make Budapest even stronger, or if I go one, two, three, make Debrecen stronger. Here's the thing. The Russians have the opportunity to do a flank attack in Debrecen. And they'd even get a plus one for it because of... There's no other allied unit that they can draw back to. And a win at the flank attack, wiping out an army, would be catastrophic. So there's a lot to be said for taking this army and moving it into Debrecen. Or I could just move it into Sheged and reduce their likelihood of a successful flank attack. Because it's almost more important to protect a line of retreat than it is to get super hardcore into building up really elaborate defenses here. Like, if I place this unit in Budapest, Russia's not stupid, they're going to ignore Budapest. They're going to attack Debrecen and then work to flank Budapest in a later turn. If I put them in Debrecen, it forces Russia to really think hard about what matters more to them. If I keep them in Vienna, I basically am surrendering Debrecen in order to increase our chances of protecting Vienna. And I really think that's actually the best course. I think we have to do that. Losing an army in Debrecen would suck. But it would be much, much worse to lose everything by losing both Budapest and Vienna. Austria just doesn't have the forces. Um, Germany's either going to have to come help them out or Germany's going to have to do enough damage to Russia that all these advances here just don't matter. It's going to be challenging, but it could be done if they start working on the Russian supply lines, which are getting incredibly long right now. Um, but there's also not enough German units to do that. Maybe once we've defeated them here in um, Javli, I'm assuming that's how that's pronounced. I don't know Lithuanian well enough to tell you for sure. Or Latvian. Memo's part of Lithuania. So is Libava, or Lipava, or Libau. So I think, I'm not sure. If you're from this part of Eastern Europe, you can help remind me if this would properly be Lithuanian or Latvian. Uh, Riga is Latvian. I know that for a fact, but I'm not so sure about this. Anywho, um, so this is an op, this is an op, and then the fourth op, okay. So let's go ahead and settle this one first. I get my plus one. Uh, it's 5v2. I already know the allies don't have any cards. That's a six for Germany. That's going to be five losses. France only gets to inflict two losses, which is not enough to affect the army. So five losses is actually going to be a wipe out of the core. Because basically what's going to happen is this gets reduced. The core gets placed out. And then the core immediately has to take two losses. So it's actually just also removed. 
And then Germany's going to go ahead and advance. They can actually advance up to two spaces. So they technically would have to, but... Yeah, that's actually a good question. If a unit gets eliminated, can I advance two spaces? No, you only get to advance the defender. Just... That's fine. It's still a free VP. And again, I get to keep my Alpencore card. Although, to be honest with you, there's there's kind of no more opportunities to use it. I'm kind of out of mountain land. Because um, I don't think Nancy is a mountain. So, it's fine though. And the best part is, it's not the kind of combat card that gets removed from the game. So, I can always see this again in a future turn. Now, uh, Kovno versus Javli. There's a bit of a gamble here, um, and I don't really have anything to help with it because, once again, I'm an idiot, and I ignored um, Yeah, that's... It's my bad. Um, I can always try to flank him in Riga, except I can't because of the fort. Infuriating. Oh, well, that's my own fault. Um, I didn't plan enough ahead, and so we're just going to have a nice big clash between Germany and Russia. It's going to be 7v5, and it's going to come down to the dice rolls. Uh, a 7 on a 4 is 4 losses. A 5 on a 5 is also 4 losses. So both sides will take 4 losses, but then they can stay where they are. Thankfully... That's going to severely blunt this. And then that happens. So I'm still in a very good potential chance to, to hammer them later on. And I can just say they ended their turn in Memel. So that next turn I can actually try to do the flank attack I wanted to do. Um, a pretty productive turn, I think, all things considered. Alpencore is still in play because they won the combat. Now, I want to drive on Austria. I want to cause some major league freaking havoc on them. However... Mm -hmm. Okay. I'm almost positive I'm going to play this card. So let's get that out of the way and let's go ahead and trigger it as ops. That I 100% know is what's going to happen. I'm just not sure which ops I'm going to worry about. Um, The path to Barley Duke is pretty well open. But the best I could do is move an army in there to slow them down. And I'm not sure that's the best use of my time. Um, I do want to get the British and French armies more involved. Because the British being all the way back here in Leman is just stupid. So let me do this. I'm going to activate this base. I'm going to go 1, 2, 3. 1, 2, 3. Like, this is still pretty high odds, but it's not as bad now. And it at least forces them to, to think carefully about where they want to go next. So that's, that's the first op. I want to make two advances in Russia. The question is where? I want to hit Krakow. 
Because punching through crack out is going to cause some pretty severe damage. I've also got to be concerned about Germany, though. Germany has a lot of potential to potentially... I don't know why I said potentially twice. To start cutting off my supply to my own units. It would be very difficult, but it could be done. So I've got to be cautious about how hard and how fast I advance. Um, Russia's supply always goes back to their own supply sources. They don't trace supply by sea. Um, right. Like, the flank attack on Debritsen seems like a pretty attractive option here, to be honest with you, my gentle viewers. I'd love to hit Budapest. I would. But if I do that while Debritsen is sitting here as a chance to threaten my flank, I think that's just not worth it. So I'm going to go ahead and do that, and we're going to try a flank attack. Uh, it's going to get a plus one. The actual attacking space is going to be this one. This is just going to be the pinning space. Let me make sure that's how flank attacks work. I think the I think the pinning space can still advance though. Let me see here. Um Let me see here. Oh, I see. So it's just one frontal assault space. Okay, perfect. All right. That doesn't mean I can't advance, though, with any units during a flank attack. So that's exactly what I want. All right. Let us do it, comrades. Um... I would say Tavarishie, but in this particular era of history, I think that would not be used. Uh, okay. So we're going to hit us some Austrians. Flank attack rolls first. Uh, I get a plus one to this, a four through six. It is indeed a flank attack. And we succeed. So, that means I get to inflict my damage on them before they get to do any damage to me. Uh, I've inflicted 9, 12, 13 versus 3. Uh, so I immediately come down here. 13 on a 5 is 7. Uh, so what's going to happen is this just gets ruffle stomped. Because it's going to be 4 to eliminate the army, 2 to eliminate the core. Yeah, it's just gone. And the core is also reduced strength as well, by the way. So Austria definitely needs... We need to get some strategic redeployment, replenishment for Austria, or they're going to start losing armies permanently. And then I can advance as many or as little as I want to... I'm going to take one of the armies from here and have that be the one that captures Debritsen. And I'll bring up the core from Cluj as well. There we go. That's a very spicy meatball. And then VP goes back to 11. Nice work for Team Russia. Um, and Austria is now incredibly vulnerable because they have no core left and their replenishment box. This is extremely bad for Austria, which means any other Aus armies that I reduce are gone from the game and can never be recreated. Um, and if you think that Russia is not going to care about that, you are badly mistaken. All right, that was the Allied turn. Back to the German turn. Central Powers turn. Now, they're definitely concerned about Austria. Um, and they would like to go help. 
Is there a way they could do it? I mean, they have to play replenishment points. That's the only thing that's ever going to save Austria to the point where they don't lose all of their armies. Can Germany get into position to actually make a difference? Even strategic redeployment is not going to help a huge amount. Because it only revealed to move German core. I, remember more, I really want my Dame flank attack to wipe out those units there. Um, do we just let Austria twist in the wind? Maybe. Like there's, there's just not really a way that Germany can help unless I spend an entire term strategically redeploying German core in Austrian territory. Is it worth it? Is it worth it to say take these four core, pull them out, and start redistributing them wherever they might be helpful? Like I could put a core in Budapest. I could put a core in Vienna. I could drop a couple of other core just to slow down Russia. Is it worth it? <sighs> Two cores in Krakow. That would make for a very formidable defense. You know what? I think we have to do it. I'm going to play Kamal for strategic redeployment. So remember, it can go to any friendly space as long as you can trace a path to it. And thanks to Breslau, I can. So I'm going to do... Full strength core and reduced strength core to Krakow. That makes this, with the trench, that's going to make this very difficult to take. Um, and then I'm going to take full strength core, we Budapest, full strength core. From Bialystok, we to Vienna. Oh, let's go ahead and mark Bialystok and Brest-Litovsk with the Central Powers tokens, just to remind me that those are actually still controlled by me. There we go. And I just need to make sure that I did strategic redeployment right. But I'm 99.9% .9 sure that I did. I just haven't used the feature in a while. And I know that you could also just pull pull units from the box too, but I'd rather move the ones on the map. That to be in supply. And as long as it's any other friendly supplied space and it's and as long as it's uh, solid or dashed. Okay. And core can also strategically redeploy by sea. I didn't realize that. That offers some more interesting British things. I know I could have just pulled some German core out of the box instead. And I still might do that later on. But the thing is, it has to be of the same nationality. Um, I cannot... And if I want, so I want Germans help Austria, they got to come from the map. Um, that's fine. So, uh, that is the conclusion of the Allied turn, or Central Powers turn. Now the Allies go. And they're sitting on a hand full of two core, of two ops spaces, rather.
They have a unique possibility, does Russia, for wiping out Austrian armies. Actually, any of the Allies can do it. Right? Any Allied unit can do it. It doesn't have to be Russia. Hmm... But there's really not much they can do. I think movement is going to be this, the topic of this two ops space. Yeah, I think we have to do movement. We have to get armies in position here. So I'm going to go ahead and play Putnik for ops. I could also strategically redeploy. Um, that is not lost on me. Wait, I'm not going to do that. I want to make sure that I get a chance to play two replenishment points. Because there's still a lot of units here that I'd like to bring back onto the field. So I'm actually going to use this for RP. And that's going to give me one British, one French, and one Russian. Alright, we switch back to the Central Powers and they say replenishment points, what a great idea. Do they have a really good card for that? They do. The High Sea Fleet card gives us actually two for Austria, which is what we need more than anything. So that's going to be RPs. And that's going to be three German, one Turkish, one Russian, two Aust or one Bulgarian, two Austrian. So it's two Austrian, one plus three for four. One, one... I think that's it, right? Yes. Oh, were there any Italian RPs on that card? No, just British, French, and Russian. Okay. All right. Knowing what Austria is planning here, I have to get units in position to make a big attack. Plus, I want to make sure that our supply lines are strong, are secured. So I'm going to go ahead and play. I'm going to go ahead and actually play Hurricane Barrage for Ops. And I'm going to go one. Sorry, not both units, just the army. And then I'm going to go one, two for the second. And I'll just leave behind an allied marker to indicate that we still control Debrecen. Um, only one more action left for the Central Powers. Look, they're going to go ahead and take ops. They're going to play severe weather for ops. And they're just going to go ahead and do their flank attack here. They instantly play the wireless intercepts card. They're going to lose this card. Um, but it's a guaranteed flank attack, which means there's a really good chance we can just wipe out these units. Um, and that's very worthwhile. So I'm just going to roll this first. So I get a four. And with a combat factor of two, three, four, five, eight. I'm going to do four losses. So that's going to be two cores gone.
this army gone. And then a core comes back out. And then I get to go ahead and roll and see how much damage it does because that'll matter in terms of no, they're gonna retreat. They're gonna retreat two spaces no matter what. So this is literally just to see if they do any damage whatsoever. They do. So they are gonna damage uh, a core. Um, but then they're gonna have to retreat two spaces. Oh, but I can cancel retreat if I go into a, if I go into Riga. Is that what I want to do? What does the cancel retreat step do? Oh, you know what? I would happily take a step. Because otherwise they can just bum rush Riga. So I will take a step so that I don't have to retreat all the way back. And then only one core can advance. But that was still worthwhile. And then that card gets removed from the game. That concludes the Central Powers turn. Now the allies get to go. I'm halfway tempted to go after the Austrian armies here with my plus one. But we'd lose because of the, the thick defenses there. I think it has to be a drive on Budapest. And we just do as much damage as we can and hope we can take out the two Austrian armies. It is very worth it. It is extremely worth it to go for this particular fight. So that's exactly what we're going to do. Uh, we're going to spend the air superiority card for ops. I know I said I wanted to do two cards of RP, but frankly, the, the ability to wipe out two Austrian armies is too good a chance to take. Um, because I'm activating both spaces, I do get a plus one. If I did a flank attack, I'm not going to do a flank attack. It's not worth the risk. Of them actually getting to hurt me first. Although, let's check the table. The best they can get is a 6. A 6 on a 6 is 5 losses. Is that enough to take out multiple units? It really isn't. It's just going to reduce strength. So the 50-50 shot. I don't get the plus 1 because of the Viennese uh, army here. Um... I have a lot of force here. You know what? Let's try it. Oh, ho, ho, ho. oh gosh. I saw that one. I saw that one. And then it's like, surprise. So we do succeed. Uh, we get to play first. Or deal damage first. So total is going to be 12 and 1 is 13. That is 7 losses. This is going to be great. So. Here's what the at, here's what they're going to do. Because it's going to save an army. Even at the cost of a German core. They're going to take two losses. This core is removed. That's two of the seven. This army just gets flat out removed. There's no cores to replace it. It's removed from the game. That's a total of four losses. Five, six. So by basically sacrificing a German core, the Central Powers player does manage to preserve at least one army. And then they're going to get to counterattack. It's probably not going to be very good. It's not. It's actually literally no damage. And they have to retreat two spaces. Um, I 
They're gonna go... Probably to Graz here. Graz would be a pretty good defensive position. So they're gonna go one, two, and to Graz. No actual losses for Russia. Uh, so we're just gonna go and take all three of these armies and push them up. No, we're not. We're gonna leave one army behind. Because I don't like the idea of them just cutting off my supply lines by being sneaky bastards. Uh, and that's going to be a VP for the Allies. Excellent. All right. Now we have completed all of our action rounds. Let's go ahead and check sieges. I don't think anyone is under siege this turn. They are not. There are no sieges happening. Oh, we go to attrition, but it doesn't matter because no one's out of supply. War commitment. The central powers have been waiting for this. Uh, this card gets discarded. This card gets discarded. They're going to go a boop. A boop. And they're going to go shuffle, 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 shuffle. Uh, next, the replacement phase. Um, allies always go first. They have one British, one French, and one Russian. Um, remind me. Uh, what do I want to do with my Russian unit? I mean, if I'm going to defend Riga, I should probably do this. Oh, no, that's a core. That's not an army. Do I even have an army I could recreate? I, I do. I could recreate another army. But I don't really see the point. I think I'd actually rather have... Uh, can I put two core into the box? No, I could put one eliminated core at full strength in the reserve box. For one point. I actually think that's fine. I'd rather have a full strength core that I could call upon. So that's what Russia's going to do. That's the Russian point spent. France has a point. Um, are there any reduced strength armies? There aren't. They could recreate an army. That's not super duper helpful. They could just flip these two cores, but honestly, French cores aren't that important. I think they would rather put two reduced strength cores on the map. <clears throat> they can do that, right? No, it would be one... Yeah, it would be flip one. How can I put reduced strength cores on the map? Oh, I can only put them in the box. That's actually fine. Um, let's put two reduced strength cores in in the box here. I know I could recreate an army. I just don't see the point right now when I don't have enough core to support it. That's the French done, and then the Brits. I don't think the Brits can do anything. Because none of their units have been reduced. And they don't have any eliminated units that they can restore. So yeah, uh, that was a waste for the Brits, but sure. Uh, Turkey has no reduced strength units. They're just going to kind of vibe, I guess. Austria has two. Um, they desperately need just core. So they're going to go ahead and pull four core even at reduced strength, out of the box and into the box here. They have no other choice. If they don't... I mean, I guess they could just do two full strength core in the box. That is actually... Yeah. Mm, that saves two armies. But this saves four, potentially. 
And as long as you can put the unit on the map, I don't think it eliminates the army from the game. Um, so let me see here. Um... Yeah, I'm just looking through this here really quickly here. I think what I've been doing is it makes sense. Okay. All right. So yeah, this actually makes the most sense. This has the best chance of actually preserving Austrian armies from being eliminated from the game. Uh, so that's used. And then Germany has four replenishment points. Uh, here's one for reduced strength army. Here's two for reduced strength army. Here's three for two full strength core on the map. And then I get one more. Uh, if I do this one... No, I'm just going to, yeah, I'll just pull my last core out and just put it at full strength. And that's the German spent. Okay. The last thing that happens, however, because of the blockade, is that the allies gain a VP. We advance the turn. It's now spring of 1916. And most importantly, the Central Powers are now on total war footing. Let me pull all of these off. Now, I don't know if there's going to be enough mega-powered cards, because uh, I haven't played Paths of Glory enough to know how good the total war cards are for them. But it's going to be interesting. Oh, we didn't draw up to our, um, yeah, so you get seven cards. And the central powers, I'm going to shuffle a couple more times. So they're going to get eight cards. Very nice. Let's roll for mandated offensives. Uh, two, Austria must attack Italy. Four, for the Allies, is another mandatory Italian attack. Okay. I get two core... Ah, uh, shame. I actually got some pretty crappy cards as the central powers. Um, that's fine, though. I'd love to have two new armies as Germany. I think that would be massive. So I'm going to go and actually start with that. Uh, German reinforcements. Two new armies. What is it, 17th and 18th? Okay. It's just good. And where would you be of most value to me? I can place it on any friendly supply source or capital. Or does it have to be of that nationality? Like, could I put them in Vienna? That's a really good question. I'm not quite sure. 
it's under the reinforcement rules. But I think it has to be of your nationality. Yeah, nation's capital or friendly controlled supply sources. That's fine. I mean, I could get really sneaky and like put them in Sofia, but I think that would be real dumb. Uh, so I'm not going to do that. Um, do I really want to push on France or do I want to try to save Austria? Or do I want to just keep punishing Russia? The thing is, there's only one more easy space, so to speak, to take. That's a victory point, which is Riga. Everything else is going to force me to go pretty far inland. To either take Odessa or Kiev. Um, so I kind of think our best use of these forces is going to either be to try to save Austria or to go keep pushing on France. And there's just so many VPs in France that I think that's actually the better choice. So we're going to take one army here. Drop it in Essen. And then I think we take this other army here and drop it in Breslau. Oh wait, is Königsberg a German supply source? It is not. Okay. Yeah, I think the central power supply sources are just Sofia, Breslau... An S in. Is that right? Oh, Constantinople is the other one. But I can't put a German unit in Sofia or Constantinople, I don't think. So it's fine. Uh, that is a Central Powers turn. A very simple turn, but one that'll set the tone for the rest of their turn. I mean, having Greece join the Allies is not as great as it sounds. Because I think they only ever get two core, right? Like, it's not going to make any difference if I bring them in or not. What is this? Allenby. Ooh, I get the British Northeast Arm, a Near East Army in Alexandria. That's pretty spicy. Maud, anyone attack me by British units, tracing supply to Basra, can fire on the army table. That's pretty good. Russian cavalry would gain us two free corps. That's pretty spicy. Great retreat. I'm not going to do that shit. That's cowardly. And then there's my British reinforcements card. All right. Um, if I had a Russian reinforcements card, I'd actually play that first. I don't even know if there are any more, though. Oh, no, there are. Yeah, I've got this one and this one. I can't believe I've never gotten the 9th and 10th army card. At least I just haven't played it for it, but oh well. Um, How many cavalry corps is it? It's two. Um, I'm going to go ahead and play Allenby. I think this just makes good sense. That counts as a British reinforcement, so I can't play another one. It does increase war status by one. Uh, do note that the combined war stats is now 29. We're actually not far away from being Fall of the Tsar. That could change everything. So Russia's probably going to want to get some shit together. And then it's the British North uh, Near East Army. 
in Alexandria. And then we remove this from the game. And now all of a sudden, I've got a lot more options in the Near East in case Russia does fall. Um, especially wiping out this pissant little army in Libya, but I'm not super concerned about that right now. Alright, what do we want to do to the Central Powers? I really want Riga. It is essential, because it's going to quick, more quickly advance my timeline. I'm going to play the German Reinforcements card for Ops, because I can't use it this turn anyway. And I'm going to activate the Cove No spot, so we can go here. And then I need to drop this bad boy right here. That was just one space. I need to get these armies somewhere where they can actually cause some trouble. So I'm going to go ahead and bring this, this space up into one, two, three for Sedan. And then that gives us a victory point. Because we have Zidane. Um, actually, I was in no, I was in essence. So I go one, two, three. Yeah, that's fine. All right. Uh, back to Italy. I I didn't mean to say Italy, but I guess Italy does make sense. Um, what do I want to do here? Oh, you know what? It is spring. When can I not attack in the desert? It's summer. Okay. Um. I definitely want to get this army in a position where I can actually start doing some good. <clears throat> but not anytime soon. Um. I don't really want Greek entry. To be honest with you, I'm just not convinced that that's something that we need. I think what we need to do is keep pushing. I really want more Russian armies is the thing that I really desperately need. I could also start trying to retake um, what I've lost. Do you have any good combat cards for Russia? I sure don't. Um, um, I need to take Krakow. I think that's a key thing that I need to do this turn. Or at least start taking Krakow, right? I need to get units in position to kick them out of Krakow. And it's going to be hard because of the fort. That's not... That's not uh, inappropriate. And I'm sure there's other things I can do with ops as well. I mean, 
I do like the idea of getting two more cavalry corps, like in Odessa, and then I can do things with them. Or heck, put them in Riga. Maybe I have to do that. How good are the Russian Cavalry Corps? That's the Czech Legion. I mean, they're fairly good units. I think I am actually going to go ahead and play Russian Cavalry. And that just counts as a generic event. It doesn't count as anything else. Because if we at least have a chance to fire back and reduce their chances, I'm going to do it. There we go. And again, I completely ignore the idea of attacking Germany and France, but I think we're already getting to the point where Germany's weight is pretty strong. Polish Restoration isn't terrible. Um, Three more core for Germany, though, is just not something that I need. I'd rather use that card for something else. Let's play Reichstag Truce for... Ops? Or for Replenishment? I think ops actually makes some fair sense, actually. Let's do it for ops. Do it for the ops. Right. Um. Do we do the attack to end all attacks on Verdun? Like, the Mega Giant attack, just to punch out Verdun. Or do we just work up to that this turn? Oh, that would be sassy. I could try to cut off Verdun from reinforcements. And then attack Verdun when they can't retreat. Or heck. Wait, 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 wait. Could I just cut off their supply? Can they draw to a fort? I don't think they can. So that's actually the solution. Is... To cut off supply to Verdun by taking Chateau Thierry and uh, Bar le Duc. So instead of this giant meat grinder, we just need to cut off Verdun. So we're going to go ahead and we're going to do an attack. Uh, we're going to activate Sedan and Nancy and Dijon. We're activate three. Um, and I get to activate four, right? This attack will never get any easier. So I'm just going to go ahead and say we'll attack in Riga too. Any cool combat cards? A German attack versus a clear space adds a plus one DRM. I'm going to do that without hesitation. Let's play some, some freaking Octung Tan Panzer. And we're actually going to start by attacking Bar le Duc. And I'm going to designate both these spaces so I can attack with all three armies. I just want to have to advance with all three armies. That's going to be 1, 2, 3. That's going to be 15 versus 6. Plus 1 for me. Anything that the allies would like to play in terms of combat cards. Um, we're not in mountains or swamp. I 
I could just play withdrawal. Um, let's see how bad this gets. Let's see how bad this attack is. All right, so it's 15 V6. So both sides roll their dice. Uh, 15, that's a 7 for them, and 6, that's 5. Or that's 5. So 7 and 5. Um, yeah, um, that's 4... All right, so we're going to do one, two, remove this core. God, this box is getting crowded. But I, it, it was seven losses, right? Yeah, so this actually gets removed as well. And is replaced by a core from the box. A full strength core, but a core nonetheless. And then uh, the British were at six. They got a five, so they did five losses. Uh, we only have to absorb one. I'm just going to go ahead and weaken this one here in Dijon. They have to retreat two spaces. They'll probably pull back into Paris. And I'm going to advance one army here to Nancy. So the next thing that happens is this attack here on Chateau Thierry. Oh, I didn't add my plus one. It just didn't it didn't matter though. But yeah, I won the battle so I get to keep my Octong Panzer card. And I'm gonna use that here in Chateau Thierry. And that's gonna be 12v3. That comes out to a five. That's again gonna be seven losses. You only inflict three on me. And seven losses would basically remove this army and replace it with a core. That would be reduced strength. They have to retreat two spaces. They're going to go ahead and uh, retreat to probably like... Ruen. Um, they did inflict, what was it, three losses? A four on a three? Yeah, three losses. Um, yeah, a core is good enough to do what I wanted to do, which is cut off their supply. Plus we take a bar le duc which is a VP. And we now place Verdun out of supply. Which is obviously going to provoke a reaction from the allies to try to save their unit. Because um, losing three French armies dead and gone is probably the end of the game. In terms of France ever being helpful again. So we shall see what happens, my dear friends. Did I resolve all my combats? Oh, no, I didn't. We still have this combat that I didn't resolve. Um, I can't remember if port counts as a space. This also counts as a clear space, but I think the trench would actually stop it because it's a trench. So um, I get to key. I do lose this. This card is removed from the game, but it was worth it. Um... And then we come over here, and it's going to be a 9 on 2. Um, 
And it's core, right? Yeah, they're all core. So they do move up one. So they're going to be on the three space. And I actually end up on the six, eight space. So six, eight, a five is five losses. A three on the three is just one loss. So my core gets reduced. I did how many? I did how much damage? Five on five. Five losses. So it's going to be just enough to wipe out all three units without having enough left to destroy the fort as well. So we're still going to have to besiege it. But we remove the trench. That's not nothing. And then these cavalry corps all get sent back to the box. I thought I saw something about the Russian cavalry corps not being able to be replaced. Is that right? No, they're marked with a dot. So since it's not marked with a dot, then those actually could be used again. Holy shit, we've taken a lot of casualties as as the allies. Um, okay, it's now the allied turn. We need a way to punch through the German defenses. Ahem. <clears throat> Uh, let's go ahead and play the Great Retreat for Ops. Or do I play for a Strategic Redeployment? Nah, uh, Ops is, is good. And it's going to be three Ops, right? Yeah, three Ops. Um... So we're going to go... Oh, that's interesting. I forgot that part. I think I can activate... I think if as long as it's British, that it counts as ally. Um... That's under ops, isn't it? That talks about the cost to activate spaces. Uh, Belgian units don't count as British. Um, so that's been two to activate the space. That's fine. Uh, I'll do that. And I will go one, two, three. One, two, three. That's two of my three ops. And then I'm going to go... Uh, one, two. All right. That's my turn. Uh, as the allies, now I go to the central powers. They're definitely going to move units. So I'm going to go ahead and play Polish Restoration for Ops. Because I want them big ops cards for three. And the Morgan is we're just going to pull a bunch more units to the front. So I'm going to take this army out of Strasbourg. I'm going to put it in Chateau Thierry. That's one. I'm going to take this army out of Dijon and move it to Nevers. That's two. Oh, I didn't move y'all up and then uh, start the siege, did I? There you go. Uh, I need a Central Powers token for Dijon. So I've moved two units. 
This core isn't doing anybody any favors where it is right now. So let's go ahead and bring it up. One, two, three, four to say Dan. There is one obvious weak spot, which would be a hard drive on Chateau Thierry by the Parisian forces. Um, but that's certainly not a guarantee. It is certainly not a guarantee. Do the Brits have a sneak have a sneaky trick? They could bring in two new core. They could bring Greece into the Allies. But to be frank, I think they're going to go ahead and use this mod card. And they're going to use it for um, ops. Alright. Um, this is time for a big brain play. Like, if we don't drive on Chateau Thierry and win, we're, we're kind of fucked. Because that's three armies gone that we'll never get back. So I think I spend all four ops just activating... Um, oh, no, wait a minute. I don't think we have to spend four ops. Um, how does a Belgian unit work with a British unit in Cambrai? No, it still counts as Belgian. Okay. This is going to cost me four to activate both of these because it's one per nationality. We have French and British, and we have French and, and Belgian and British. But this brings overwhelming odds against Germany, and that's kind of what has to happen here. Because if we can't guarantee this victory and reopen up supply to Verdun, that's three French armies gone. But then we worry that what's left is going to be really weak and they're just going to counterattack and do it again. So there's, it's give and take, uh, but it is what it is right now. I could have pulled this army out of Metz. I didn't realize that. Because it's German space, which means you can't normally draw supply to it anyway. Oh well. All right. Um, Sue. So. It's going to be big. It's it's going to be a lot. Uh, allies decline. Do you have any sneaky tricks here? You don't. So it's going to come down to the dice, my friends. Um, so it is going to be five, six, seven, eight. Is trying a flank attack worth it? I don't think it is. The last thing I want to do is have the Germans get a really lucky roll and then just fuck us up. So that's going to be 3, 4, 5, 6, 7, 11 versus 7. All right. So the Central Powers... Uh, on their seven, get a five. Oh no. Each side takes five losses. But here's the really crappy part. We don't win the battle, so they don't have to retreat. So each side takes five losses. Um... Do I have any Belgian core? I sure don't. So if the Belgian army gets wiped out, it's gone forever. So I'm going to do... Three... Four... And I'm going to go ahead and remove this French core. Five... Germany takes five losses as well, so they reduce their army, and then they lose their core. 
But that was not what they wanted. The lines are still cut off. And now Germany can just bring in reinforcements. From Metz, for instance. Or attack Melun with the Nevers army and start attacking Paris. At least this army here is still full strength, and I think this is going to be the number one target for Germany. So. Yeah, knocking out Cambrai would basically cripple any chance of retaking Chateau Thierry. So I think it's more ops time. And um, we're going to go ahead and actually play Kaiser True for this. Um, I recognize that we're not attacking with Austria and Italy the way we're meant to. But I don't think the Central Powers care. Wiping out three French armies is worth way more than a single victory point. So that's going to be for ops. Alright. Um, just because it's almost guaranteed to, to, to succeed, I'm going to attack Meloon with Nevers. And I'm just going to resolve that instantly. Like, pretty much there's no way that, that France survives that. So I'm just going to do it nice and easy. Um, hilariously... They are eliminated, but I still don't get to advance because I only got a one. Yikes. Um, can you advance if all units are eliminated? If they're completely, but they're also full strength, so it's that's, that just basically just goes, you go into the box. Which is fine. All right. Um, I have to remember, I don't need a physical unit there. I just need to have cut them off. So I'm going to bring this army up. And there's no way they can do a sneaky end. No, there is a way they could do a sneaky end around and just retake it. Because Barla Duke is also an important spot. We actually need to punch out an army if we can manage it. Um, there's no way they're going to get to Metz. So I can go ahead and, and just advance this Metz army. And I'm going to go one, two, three to reinforce Chateau Terry. And then I think the last thing we do is very simple. I think we attack Cambrai. Now, this is certainly not a. What's what I'm looking for? This is not a risk fee strategy because it's seven V five. And I don't really have anything that gives me a boost to that. But the alternative is just waiting. Oh, you know what I could do instead? As long as they don't move, I could entrench. But the thing is... I have to I have to go after like losing Sedan isn't actually what matters. I mean actually either one of them could matter. Is a seven V five Cause if they can if they have another four ops card and can activate both these spaces again That's it. Uh, they're going to be able to break through one of these two spaces. And maybe there'll be enough left to just take it right back. I need some RPs as the Central Powers. Uh, my last card's got to be spent on RPs this turn. Which is really sucks because I don't have any good ones, but whatever. 
Yeah, I'm going to attack Cambrai. I think it's worth the risk. Because even if the losses are even, if they can't advance, it doesn't matter. Oh, uh, so we're going to attack Sedan to Cambrai, and that's going to be 7v5. It's risking a lot, but I think it'll be worth it. Then again, maybe not. So, 7v5, that's 5 losses to me. 3 losses to them. So, here's the interesting dilemma that they face. If they sacrifice... If they just reduce this British army, they can't advance next turn. Because you can only ever advance with a full strength unit. So I think they have to sacrifice the army in Cambrai, which is just going to be gone from the game because there is no Belgian core available. So goodbye first Belgian army. We hardly knew ye. And then five losses for Germany is pretty brutal. They're going to lose this core. And for the first time in forever, they're actually going to lose an army too. It seems like forever, but it's true. Which does get replaced with a core, however. So that was actually not the end of the world. And it's actually they're even an even better shape than they were before. Um, so that's it for action number five. Damn it. Um, do I have British core? I do. We need to strategically redeploy. And then we're going to hit Sedan again at the end here. Uh, I'm going to use severe weather. I'm going to use withdrawal for strategic redeployment because, frankly, I don't need it for anything else. And two core are going to be more than enough to change the situation enough that we have a, a, a shot, potentially, at breaking things up. It's still not a guarantee, though. And in fact, the Germans will probably just do something really sassy, like move their f the 4th Army over. Which I think is precisely what they're going to do. So we're going to go ahead and use our last action to play another Ops card. We're going to use Alpencore. Uh, they're going to move um, this army here into Sedan. Oh, wait a minute. No, that doesn't make any sense. Yes, it does, actually. No, it doesn't. Yes, it does. No, it doesn't actually matter. Yeah, I pull this army over here. And then I go 1, 2. And Maloon then becomes Central Powers. Ah, uh, here it is. And the reason I'm doing this is because... There's still nothing stopping Paris from attacking Chateau Thierry. Or even just doing another all-out attack on it. However, they won't be able to advance. As long as the losses are sufficiently bad. And I'm also betting they don't have a 3-ops card. Which means they can't legally attack from Paris anyway. Um, yeah, that's that's what's happening there. I do have a three ops card though. And basically attacking with everything we've got on Chateau Terry is basically our only chance. If we can resupply Verdun, we don't lose three armies and we might actually do some serious damage to the German armies. Um... 
the Battle of Chateau Terry is going to be incredibly important. Um, let me just make sure you can still attack with reduced strength units. Uh, yeah, it doesn't say you can't. All right. Let's do it. I wish I had a combat card for this, but I don't. Um, so, Greece has played for ops, and it's going to piss away my chance to gain any replenishment points this turn. Oh, no, it's not. I did get some. Wait, what? Oh, no, I got strategic redeployment. That's right. I don't have a choice, though. Uh, I have to sacrifice everything to attempt to win here and help them regain supply at Verdun. So, uh, it's 6 German versus 4, 8, 10, 11 French. And British. Alright, so 11 on a 4. 4 on 11 is 5 losses. Uh, two on a six is three losses. So they only retreat one space. We do inflict three losses. Um, they really don't want to lose a French army, but it's better than any other alternative. So they're going to go ahead and lose the 10th army and bring in a core. Five losses means uh, one German army is eliminated. As is the core that comes in to replace it, because it's five losses, right? So basically I have an eliminated unit here. Because you always have to take the losses if you can. And then this army gets to retreat. Uh, it has to retreat two spaces, so it's just going to go back to non C. And the British 4th Army moves up. Only the British 4th Army is going to move up. And we have saved the French armies at Verdun. Supply has been restored. Whew. That was a close one. That was a very close one. And if there had been a bad die roll there, and it almost was a bad die roll, that could have been a nightmare. But it wasn't. So no one's in attrition. We do are going to roll for a siege here in Riga. So we need to get a four, five, or six. We fail, so this army is still besieged. Uh, no attrition. War status, war status phase doesn't change. Allies have no RP. Uh, the Central Powers only have one German RP. Uh, eeny, meeny, miny, mo. Sedan, full strength. We advance the turn. And we're going to draw cards. Oh, um, each side would actually gain a VP and lose a VP, uh, but that just cancels each other out. So that's going to be six cards for the allies. That's pretty nice. Um... And then you're going to get seven cards. That 
That's some pretty spicy stuff there. Um, I'm just going to check the time really quickly here. All right, friends. We're going to go ahead and end this episode here. I know what only took place. Uh, no, actually, we did get two full turns in. A lot happened, though. Um, and it's still going to be a very interesting war going forward. Uh, thank you very much for watching. And until next time, this has been Avindian. And I bid you good day.